The Emperor's Guard. We backtracked through the grass for a good 10 minutes to see if we could find my hearing aids, but it was way too dark to see anything. We literally had to hold on to each other's shirts and walk in single file so we wouldn't trip over one another. It was like black ink had been poured all around. This is hopeless, said Henry. They could be anywhere. Maybe we can come back with a flashlight, answered Amos. No, it's okay, I said. Let's just go back. Thanks, though. We walked back towards the cornfields and then cut through them until the back of the giant screen came into view. Since it was facing away from us, we didn't get any light from the screen at all until we walked around to the edge of the woods again. That's where we finally started seeing a little light. There was no sign of the seventh graders anywhere. Where did you think they went, said Jack. Back to the food trucks, said Amos. They're probably thinking we're going to report them. Are we, asked Henry. They looked at me. I shook my head. Okay, said Amos, but little dude, don't walk around here alone again, okay? If you need to go somewhere, tell us and we'll go with you. Okay, I nodded. As we got closer to the screen, I could hear high on a hill was a lonely gothard and could smell the cotton candy from one of the concession stands near the food trucks. There were lots of kids milling around in this area, so I pulled what was left of my hoodie over my head and kept my face down, hands in pockets, as we made our way through the crowd. It had been a long time since I'd been out with my hearing aids, and it felt like I was miles under the earth. It felt like that song Miranda used to sing to me. Ground control to Major Tom. Your circuit's dead. There's something wrong. I did notice as I walked that Amos had stayed right next to me, and Jack was close on the other side of me, and Miles was in front of us, and Henry was in the back. They were surrounding me as we walked through the crowds of kids, like I had my own emperor's guard. Sleep. Then they came out of the narrow valley, and at once she saw the reason. There stood Peter and Edmund and all the rest of Aslan army, fighting desperately against the crowd of horrible creatures whom she had seen last night. Only now, in the daylight, they looked even stranger and more evil and more deformed. I stopped there. I'd been reading for over an hour, and sleep still didn't come. It was almost 2 a.m. Everyone else was asleep. I had my flashlight on under the sleeping bag and maybe the light was why I couldn't sleep, but I was too afraid to turn it off. I was afraid of how dark it was outside the sleeping bag. When we got back to our section in front of the movie screen, no one had even noticed we'd been gone. Mr. Tushman and Miss Rubin and Summer and all the rest of the kids were just watching the movie. They had no clue how something bad had almost happened to me and Jack. It's so weird how that can be. How you could have a night that's just the worst in your life, but to everyone else, it's just an ordinary night. Like on my calendar at home, I would mark this as being one of the most horrific days of my life. This and the day Daisy died. But for the rest of the world, this was just an ordinary day. Or maybe it was even a good day. Maybe someone won the lottery today. Amos, Miles, and Henry brought me back and Jack over to where we'd be sitting before with Summer and Maya and Reed, and when they went and sat where they had been sitting before with Eczema and Savannah in their group. In a way, everything was exactly how we'd left it before. We went looking for the toilets. The sky was the same. The movie was the same. Everyone's faces were the same. Mine was the same. But something was different. Something had changed. I could see Amos and Miles and Henry telling their group what just had happened. I knew they were talking about it because they kept looking over at me while they were talking. Even though the movie was still playing, people were whispering about it in the dark. News like that spreads fast. It was what everyone was talking about on the bus ride back to the cabins. All the girls, even girls I didn't know very well, were asking me if I was okay. The boys were all talking about getting revenge on the group of 7th grader jerks, trying to figure out what school they were from. I wasn't planning on telling the teachers about, what any, about any of what happened, but they found out anyways. Maybe it was the torn sweatshirt and the bloody elbow, or maybe it's just that teachers hear everything. When we got back to the camp, Mr. Tushman took me to the first aid office, and while I was getting my elbow cleaned up and bandaged by the camp nurse, 
Mr. Tushman and the camp director were in the next room, talking with Amos and Jack and Henry and Miles, trying to get a description of the troublemakers. When he asked me about them a little later, I said I couldn't remember their faces at all, which wasn't true. It's their faces I kept seeing every time I closed my eyes to sleep. The look of total horror on the girl's face when she first saw me. The way the kid with the flashlight, Eddie, looked at me as he talked to me, like he hated me, like a lamb to the slaughter. I remember dad saying that ages ago, but tonight I think I finally got what it meant.